Joining me from Beijing is Andy Mock. He's a senior research fellow at the Center for China and Globalization. Andy, we've seen from 5G wireless networks to artificial intelligence and what Professor Kirby mentioned in terms of technological advancements, China has made huge strides. Is China winning the global tech race? Well, thank you for having me. I would say that indeed China is winning the global tech race. As we heard from Professor Kirby, uh, infrastructure is vitally important because the ability to move goods and people from point A to point B really is the most basic form of technology. And we've seen that China, especially through uh, high-speed rail, I think as one of the most striking examples, uh, has created this uh, universal technology that has provided the backbone for China's meteoric economic growth. And similarly, when we think about high tech, especially 5G, which is nothing more than building the roads and the pipes to allow information data to move similarly uh, quickly and cheaply. And we can see China leading the way here as well. But Andy, is there a downside to all this? I mean, face recognition cameras, sensors, mass surveillance, a sense that Big Brother may be watching? Absolutely. So one of the challenges of technology, and in particular, since we're talking about information technology, that it is indeed a double-edged sword. It brings enormous benefits, but also sometimes unanticipated risks as well, uh, hacking other forms of data insecurity. And here, I think we need to recognize that China's approach is unique in that it is not only pushing the envelope in terms of the science and the application of the science, but also the political and social aspects as well. And here we see uh, with uh, socialism with Chinese characteristics or Xi Jinping thought on socialism with Chinese characteristics for a new era explicitly addresses this by saying the world, China, the world not only needs new technology, but it also needs the appropriate concepts and policies to ensure that the benefits are maximized while these uh, threats and the undesirable effects of technology are minimized or at least uh, controlled to an acceptable degree. So I think this also is a form of technology. We shouldn't look at technology just as the hard science, but the actual way it impacts people's lives. Andy, as China ramps up plans to build uh, this whole new digital infrastructure, how can foreign investors benefit when things become so politicized? As you know, anytime something involves China, it does become political. Absolutely. And I think here, though, we need to recognize that uh, the United States, of course, is a very important country, and the U.S.-China relationship is important. But the world is far more than just the United States. So Europe is an increasingly independent actor as a source of capital and technology. There are other parts of the world that are very important, maybe not as important today as sources of capital and investments uh, in an absolute sense, uh, but growing in importance. And also as markets as well. So of course there's Africa, there's Southeast Asia, South Asia, et cetera. Uh, and that there are changes going on. And I think even the United States is recognizing that China is vital, uh, whether we're looking at rare earth metals, whether we're looking at uh, access to inexpensive, uh, high quality consumer goods, uh, or foreign students that support many American towns, that uh, China is really a vital part of uh, of the future of the United States as well. So my hope is that while uh, technology indeed has become highly politicized, but that the U.S. will also adopt a more pragmatic attitude going forward. And of course, we have to see what happens next uh, with the Biden administration. All right, we'll have to leave it there. Andy Mock, thank you very much. Thank you.